How in the heck are we going to decide if both Nick Bosa and Josh Allen are available to the Jets at the number three pick on draft day? What are we going to do? How do we tell them apart? Let's find out. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Jets HQ. I'm Howie. Glad to have you back. Got a great um, question this week from from one of our subscribers that wanted to ask me to uh, compare and contrast uh, two of the top picks in this year's draft that were that may or may not be available to the Jets at the number three pick. So uh, they wanted to know uh, how to determine whether or not we're getting a better deal with Nick Bosa or with Josh Allen, and they wanted me to compare and contrast the two players, see where we come down on who to take. Now the one thing I can do, I can tell you, is that in getting ready for this video, prepping with all the numbers and all the stats and all the information, I came across one thing that was staring me in the face. These guys are fucking great, okay? So whoever we end up with, I want, I want to remind you that no matter who we end up with in this particular scenario, if we get either one of these players, we will be happy. These guys are great. They're going to be great on our team. They have engines that just never stop so and watching all of the video that I'm going to share with you and watching and, and reading all of these stats and all of the things that come to, with these players and giving them grades on their report card which I tried to do um, the one thing that came that shined out to me is that we're going to be happy with either one of them however the Jets management tr tends to grade them but I'm going to give you some tools to help you grade them and make your own decision on who you actually like better if that's even possible okay now um, Right now, everybody in the NFL world is considering Nick Bosa to be a better pick than Josh Allen. But we're talking, you know, minutia here. I mean, really, they're, they're, they're picking just, you know, very, very small little things out to try to elevate one over the other so they can determine and put them in order, which they have to do. We don't have to do that. We can just compare and contrast. So let's start off with Nick Bosa and let, let me... Can he, can he jump up high enough to knock down a pass? Can he, does he have the, the, uh, the tangible speed to get around the edge to, uh, to get to the quarterback in the NFL? Um, are his arms long enough to fight off the blocks that the, guy, that the offensive lines will, will tie you up? Are his hands big enough to recover fumbles and, and grab the football? All of these things he's got in spades, he's, it, they're all, the numbers are just off the charts. So he's really, really good there. So that's the that's all of the stats that you can come up with Nick Bosa. The rest of it is the intangible idea of watching his tape and seeing if he takes any plays off, see if he plays uh, consistently, if he, if his motor is always running, and it is. The great thing about Nick Bosa is is that his highlight film is the same as his game film. You can't tell the difference. He he's always playing. He's always on fire. He's always running. He never takes a play off. And when you're a coach, you love that, okay? The, the Jets need a guy who's not going to get down on himself, who's not going to give up on plays, who's not going to take a couple plays off. Just give you some of the, the rundown now. Nick's defensive end, he's 21 years old. He's a junior out of Ohio State. And he gave up his senior year to come into the draft. Um, he's originally from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And he's six foot four, two hundred and sixty-six pounds currently. And I think he rated at two sixty-three at the at the combine, but we swing all the time. And in his pro day, I think he weighed out at two sixty-six. But either way, it's it's, it's all the same. Uh, he brings he brings a lot of weight, and he and he is super lightning fast. So he's got a very 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 great quick first step, which is his signature. And he's very much like his brother Joey in that case. They have this an incredible first step to get to the quarterback. He also is called heavy-handed. Um, what they mean when they call Nick Bosa heavy-handed is um, when he comes out of his stance and he explodes towards the line and he brings that arm around to get around the edge defender, he, when he hits that edge defender, the linemen move. He brings a wallop. And he is a strong man, and he's very heavy-handed. And in the video that you'll see, he makes these guys that are blocking against him move every time. It's, it's not a sometime. It's an every time. So anyway, he was a first-team All-American, uh, first-team uh, All-Big Ten in 2017. He was Big Ten De Defensive Lineman of the Year in 2017. Played in the Fiesta Bowl, played in the Cotton Bowl uh, in 2016-2017. 
2018, he didn't play in the Rose Bowl because he wanted to get ready for the draft. He was injured. He had a, he had a core muscle injury, which we'll discuss. Now, a lot of people are dinging him for the fact that he decided not to play in the Rose Bowl, which, you know, I, personally, me, if I had a chance to play in the Rose Bowl, I'm fucking playing in the Rose Bowl, okay? But, you know, you're talking about millions and millions of dollars on the line. It's very difficult for a player to say, hey, you know, I just feel like playing in the Rose Bowl in a game where I might get hurt or re-injured in an injury that's not quite healed yet and um, setting up my family for life. So it's real easy for all of us to sit here and say, hey, he's, a, he's weak or he's soft or he's, he's some kind of a, you know, he, he's a give up you know, he, that because he didn't play in the Rose Bowl. I, I'm discounting that. I think this is a smart business decision. And yes, his brother is a, a super mega millionaire, but does that mean that his brother has to give him his super mega millions when he didn't make it on his own? Um, and I think that uh, in this particular case, he was protecting his family. And I, I don't see uh, the problem with that. It's pretty easy to understand. So anyway, the, the value here is that he did play in the 2016 and 2017 Fiesta and Cotton Bowls. There's some strong competition there. Those are big bowls. Those aren't little bowls. So the Ohio State Buckeyes played. He played. He played well. So we're looking like he's got a lot of um, tape to go off of, and he's got a lot of experience in, some, some, uh, in a very good division. Uh, now, he's a 4-3 edge rusher, so he, did, he, he is ideal in the 4-3. Does that mean he can't play in the 3-4? Absolutely not. He can play in the 3-4. However, when we do the report card, you'll see I did discount a lot of his pass coverage because he's just not, you know, he's just not dropping back. He's, a, he's an edge rusher. So we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. But he's, a, he's an ideal 4-3 edge guy. And the Jets do play a 3-4, a so that might be a little something to take into consideration for Mike McCagnan uh, and Greg Williams there. Okay, so anyway, in 2016, he wasn't a starter. He was just a freshman. He played 13 games as a true freshman. Made 29 tackles, 7 tackles for loss, and had 5 sacks. Pretty good for a non-starting true freshman. In 2017, he started um, 7 of the games. And he, as a true sophomore, he had 32 tackles, 14 and a half tackles for loss, uh, 7 sacks, 2 blocked passes, Eight hurries and a blocked kick. He actually blocked a kick too in uh, 2017. Also, very nice uh, stats. He's moving up. He's starting half the games and uh, he's looking very good. Now he did miss two th most of 2018. He played for three games, uh, but after three games, he was on pace. I know this isn't fair, but he was on pace for 60 tackles, 24 of them by loss, 16 sacks. Um, very, very nice beginning to the 2018 season, his true junior season. Uh, he was looking like he was going to be that all-American crazy number one pick uh, until his injury, uh, which was a core injury. Now, the core muscle injury he had surgery on, and it's had a very, very long time to heal. It's considered to be an injury that can heal fully. It's not uh, considered to be uh, a threat to re-injure just because of the injury was there before. It's a muscle injury. Those muscles tend to um, heal with uh, crossed fibers, uh, especially when the surgery is, is done very well, which it was. It was done by the best surgeon in the country. And when you allow it to heal fully, which he did, um, you get an actually even tighter bond there than you had before. We're talking about abdominal muscles, and not just the abdominal muscles on top. We're talking about the underlying abdominal muscles. Um, so he's, he's fully healed from that. It should not be a problem. It didn't seem to be a problem in his pro day. It didn't seem to be, uh, well, he didn't really do anything in his pro day. It didn't seem to be anything, in, any problem in the combine. So uh, I think that the, the core tissue injury is probably behind him. You never know, but it's something in the back of everybody's mind. But I, th I think it's behind him. Um, so now when he went to the combine, he, was, he, he, he looked great. He had 29 reps on the bench. Um, he had a 4.79 40-yard dash, which is pretty good for a guy who's 266 pounds. He, his arms are 33 inches. His hands are 10 and a third inches. He had a 33.5 inch vertical leap and a 9 foot 8 inch broad jump. So that's Nick Bosa, and uh, we'll come back to his report card in a second. Now let's go on to Josh Allen. Josh Allen uh, is a senior. He, uh, he played for Kentucky. He was 20, 21 years old, outside linebacker. 
Uh, now, of course, you know, in their system, in their 3-4 system, he played on the edge, outside linebacker, defensive end, he, he moved back and forth intermittently. So he, he was born in Virginia, he went to Montclair High School in New Jersey, so he moved to New Jersey at a young age, played a competitive league in high school uh, because of his talent and moved up. He's six foot five, two hundred and sixty two pounds, almost identical to Nick Bosa. Um, now he is a man of awards, okay? He has the SEC Defensive Player of the Year Award 2018, the Chuck Badnerick and the Bronco Nagurski Awards in 2018. So those are all both of them are, are different types of awards for the outstanding defensive player of the year. So uh, this is this is a highly recognized talent out of Kentucky. Everybody knows this guy. He's not a fluke. This is this is a super duper blue chip prospect. Um, now he's an ideal three four guy. He played in a three four system in Kentucky, and um, he only happened to rush the passer in his system about half the time. Now it's amazing to me to hear that he only rushed the passer about half the time because he got seventeen sacks last year. I can't even begin to imagine if he rushed the passer all year, what kind of crazy numbers he'd be putting up in the SEC. So um, I'm just drooling to see this guy run and play in the NFL, and he's going to be great whether it's for the Jets or not. Um, now, he's more of a speed rusher. He, they, they consider him, and I hate this, but they consider him a one-trick pony where he basically has one move. He just tries to outrun the edge and cut in. He doesn't have too many other moves. He doesn't have that big hammer hand. He doesn't have the spin move. He doesn't make, you know, he doesn't come stop and start. He doesn't have any of that. He's got one trick, and that's his speed to get around the edge. Is that going to work in the NFL? <clears throat> Sometimes. Sometimes it's not. And the question is, is he going to become frustrated, or is he going to develop the other parts of his game, which obviously he can do. Um, the, the, the question remains to be seen, but that is one of the knocks against him, so we have to watch for that. Um, now he now his team played in some lesser bowls than, than Nick Bosa. He played in the 2016 Tax Slayer Bowl and the 2017 Music City Bowl. Then he also played in the 2018 Citrus Bowl. So his team got stronger and he moved up, and the Citrus Bowl was a nice bowl game. But he didn't play in the, against the competition in those bowl games that Nick Bosa did. But, I mean, he still comes out of a very strong conference, so I, I don't think we should knock him too much for those for his team not playing in the greatest bowl games. Kentucky is just not, you know, a national uh, powerhouse like Ohio State was. Um, now, when he was a sophomore and a junior, he had averaged about 64 tackles a year, nine and a half tackles for loss, seven sacks, and he did catch one interception. Now, in his senior year, he stepped it way up. He got 88 tackles, 21 and a half for loss, and 17 sacks, as I had said, which are just mind-blowing numbers. So this guy is taken off. He's getting better, and remember, he's 21, just like Nick. These guys are getting better. I can't imagine how good they're going to get. So, blue check prospect right there. Um, he's great in the open field. He's a great open field tackler, and he will be fantastic against today's running quarterback. There is not a running quarterback in this league that can outrun Josh Allen. This guy is adept at stopping that rushing quarterback. So, this is another aspect of the NFL that everything's going to, the new Kyler Murray's, the new, you know, the rushing quarterbacks, and this guy is a, a 10 in stopping that. So that's a really good part of his game that you might want to look at. Um, now, in, in the combine, he had 28 reps on the bench. Remember, Nick had 29. He ran a 4.6340, 40, so he's about a tenth of a second faster than Bosa. His arms are 33 and a half inches. His hands are 8 and 5 eighths. So his hands are a little smaller, arms a little longer. Uh, he did 9 foot 10 inches in the broad jump, about the same. And uh, he actually didn't do the vertical. Uh, I don't know if he was injured or if he just chose not to do it. But he didn't do the vertical at the combine, so we don't know how high he can jump. I'm assuming it's pretty good. <laughs> Let's just say he can jump at least as high as Nick Bosa. So there's the, there's the numbers, okay? So how do we look at the intangible? So as far as the intangibles are concerned, let's just go down a, an idea of a report card style report on these guys, okay? So got them broken down into several categories. Now we're talking about Josh Allen and Nick Bosa. It's going to be very close, but we'll talk about speed rush first. The speed rush, obviously, Josh Allen has the speed rush a little bit over Nick Bosa. We give him a 10 there. We're going to give Bosa a 9. 
simply because he's a tenth of a second faster and his move is that edge speed rush. Bosa has other moves, so we're going to give him a little bit higher marks there, but in this case it's a ten for Josh Allen and a nine for Nick Bosa. As far as play recognition is concerned, when they see the play developing, the formations that the offenses are in, get, do they get themselves in the right spot, do they shout out the right calls, and do they break in the right way to cover the play that's coming? And both of these guys are very good at this. Both of these guys are an eight. Um, I've watched some of their, of their uh, game film. I don't ever see them confused. You never see them running the wrong way. You don't see them taking a wrong step. Um, they're always moving towards the ball, with the ball. Um, and um, they're always leading their team to the tackles. They're never following behind. Uh, as far as their effort and motor is concerned, we're going to go ahead and give nine to Josh Allen. He's never, ever stopping. He, he's, he's a man machine. He's got energy as long as the day is. Um, Nick Bosa, the same thing. We're going to give him a nine. I, I didn't see a single play in any of the, the, the game film that I watched where he stops. He runs to the huddle. He runs back from the huddle. He runs on the field. He runs off the field. He runs during the plays. After the play's over, he runs back to the huddle. He's in everything. He never stops. He never takes a play off. It's a beautiful thing to watch. Times on the ground, okay? Defensive player on the ground equals no player. So we got to look at their times on the ground. In this particular case, they are both tens. I can tell you that unless they were involved in a tackle, it is almost impossible to find film of these guys laying on the ground. Now, it is true, Nick Bosa got hurt, he was on the ground, everybody goes down on the ground when you're injured. But if you're watching regular game film, they are not beat, they never get put on the ground, they don't get pancake blocked, they don't get thrown around, it just doesn't happen. They are both tens. Um, as far as being a punishing tackler, that's our next category. Punishing tackler, we're going to go with a six for Josh Allen. He's more of an arm tackler. He's got to get better with that technique. He uses his speed, but he's got these monster arms, and he wraps them around you, and he'll try to you know, not engage the shoulder or the body when he doesn't have to. Now, on the other hand, that's what Nick Bosa does. He brings the house. He's a nine. He hits with the arms. He hits with the shoulder. He will hit with the helmet, as long as we can keep him from doing that and getting flagged. He brings it all on every tackle. He doesn't try to tackle with his arms. Um, then we go to hand use uh, in, the, in the creation of separation. Now, do these guys get wrapped up by the offensive line? Do they get wrapped up by any blockers? Do they, do they get taken over by the running back coming out of the backfield? And in this case, we're going to say with Josh Allen, he's about a six. When he doesn't beat somebody on the edge, he does get wrapped up. Uh, that will slow you down and that will stop you from getting to the quarterback. Now, he did have 17 sacks. Not too many people stopped him. But when they did, they did wrap him up and he wasn't able to create that separation. As far as, Joe, as Nick Bosa is concerned, he is a 10. If you get near him, he will knock you down. You will not wrap him up. Um, if he engages you, you will move. He will bring the heavy arms and he will knock you away. I don't care what offensive lineman you give me in the NFL. They are not going to move him. They will not knock him down. How are they in the run game? Well, the run game, <laughs> both of these guys are rushers. So it's, if you're running in their direction, they're going to stop you. They're both tens. They're flat-out tens. They stop the running game without question. There's no uh, way uh, you're going to want to be running towards these guys. It's just it's not even worth talking about. They're both tens. And now how are they in the passing game? It's our last category. So in the passing game, we're going to go ahead and see Josh Allen as a 9. He was only in, the, in pass coverage. Okay, we're talking about pass coverage, not pass rushing. In pass coverage, he's only in, he was in coverage about half the time, which is really a, a fantastic part of his game. So he's much better than Bosa in pass coverage. Um, Bosa is going to be more of a 6. He just doesn't cover passes. He's constantly rushing. He doesn't drop back, so it's very hard for to, to grade him in the pass coverage. Now, in the combine, and some of the times when, the, when there were short passes or, or, or screen passes, you could see that Bosa was a good defender against them. So we're going to give him the six there. But there's a definite separation between the two players in pass coverage because Allen just did it so much more, and he's much more developed at it. So that's the report card for those guys. Did we make a decision between the two? Do you guys decide? Personally, I want Nick Bosa over Josh Allen by that much. 
Um, I just know that his pedigree and his bloodline um, show that he's going to be a great player at the next level. If we get Josh Allen, am I going to be happy? Oh, yeah. The big smile is going to be all over my face. I love the guy. Uh, I can't wait to watch him in green and white. Either one of these guys in green and white will be fantastic. But hopefully this answers the question and helps you guys out. And uh, you have something to go on to make your decision back at home as to who you want and who you can argue with with your family now. So anyway, thank you guys very much for joining me. I'm glad for the question. Please send me more. I love to talk about this stuff. I'm glad to give you what I think is my answer. I would love to have your feedback, good or bad. Let me know if I'm stupid. Let me know if I'm saying the wrong thing. Let me know if I made a mistake. Send me some, some information. Just tell me. And if you like what I say, like, like and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Join me. Make sure you're here for the uh, first round of the draft. We're going to do uh, the, the live stream. I want to see you back here. It would be great. Anyway, thank you guys again. It's really nice to see you here. Uh, and I appreciate it. Remember, let's go Jets!